namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namaste. So I want to continue the old Nibbana series. <laughs> We've neglected it for quite a while, but uh, it really is important to attaining self-realization because it's the best expression, or the Buddha's teaching actually is the best expression of the Vivartavada. I'm going to put up the good old chart one more time. And you see, the Ajatavada is the perfection of realization. And that applies to both Vedic and Buddha's teaching. And then below that is the Vivartavada. Now that's the level that Ramana Maharshi taught on, and also Shankaracharya. So this is the level of Raja Yoga or meditation. And the ultimate goal of this level is to realize emptiness. So the logic completely changes. Up to this point in the Dvaita Vada and Vishishta Dvaita Vada, we've been going by positive logic. But at the level of Vivartavada, the logic becomes negative logic. Not this, not this, neti neti. Huh? Excluding this and that and the other thing and so many other stuff from the consciousness until only nothing is left. So first I want to explain the prayer in the opening Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa. Namo, of course, means obeisances, respectful greetings. And tassa means to him, unto him. Bhagavato means the perfectly self-realized one, the most fortunate one. Bhagavato, arahato, he who is without defilements. In other words, he has no conditioned consciousness. His consciousness is pure. Samma sambuddhasa means the most highly self-realized one. So this prayer is always chanted in the beginning of any a uh, Dhamma talk or meditation or ceremony in Buddhist temples all over the world. And it's very important, it's very deep, and we could spend actually some time going into its meaning. But we already did that in this old series here, so you can check that out. But then I want to chant another prayer and share with you the meaning of it. And that's this one. Etang santang, etang panitang, yadidang sabba sankara samato, sabhu padipati nisago tangha kayo virago nirodho nibbanam. This is peaceful. This is excellent namely the stilling of all fabrications, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving, detachment, cessation, nibbana. So this was uttered, this is, is an udana, it's an ecstatic utterance, which the Buddha made directly after attaining nibbana. And he quotes himself in many suttas, at least 24 that I could find. 
He quotes the entire sloka and in many others, and some suttas by other people, like Ananda, they quote the beginning line, etang shantang, etang panitang. What does it mean? Etang shantang, this is peaceful. No disturbance, no anxiety, no problems, no nothing. Etang panitam. This is excellent. This is wonderful. Huh? <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> and then he says, Yadidang is a conjunction. And it means, in other words, or as, as I have actually understood it, Saba Sankara Samato. Saba means all. Sankara means desires or fabrications of the mind. And samato means the cessation, the end, the stopping. What is so special and wonderful about this? That the fabrications in the mind stop. And then what? Sabhupadi patinisago. Sab, again, all, upadi. And you remember from our old video on upadis? And upadi is a mental block. <laughs> it's ignorance that covers over our full consciousness and our full intelligence. And it leads to us having conditioned consciousness instead of real consciousness. And then what? Tanha kayo. Tanha means clinging, attachment. Huh? The attachment is finished. No more attachment. Virago means detachment. Raga means attachment, so viraga means unattached. Nirodo. Nirodo, cessation, means no more becoming. And then, so what is that all about? Nibbana. Nibbana means extinguishing, like a fire that goes out when it runs out of fuel. When we say the fire goes out, well, where does it go? <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. But the conditions necessary for its arising have stopped. And of course, this leads into the discussion of dependent arising. Uh, Everything that is, or everything that comes to be or arises, is due to dependence on a previous cause. When that cause is no more, then the thing that is dependent on it also disappears. So Nibbana means the going out of the separate self the individual, uh, the illusory consciousness. So this, in a nutshell, is the definition of Nibbana. This is peaceful. This is excellent. Namely, the stilling of all fabrications, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving, detachment, cessation, Nibbana. So towards the end of the first series of this Nibbana series, we raised a question. Why is it that to speak of the purpose of Nibbana, uh, or the purpose of enlightenment, is an inappropriate question? Uh, what is the need of attaining Nibbana? Uh, what is the need of self-realization? Well, it's an inappropriate question because Nibbana, enlightenment, self-realization is not something that produces an effect. Rather, attainment of Nibbana is the end result of a long process of cause and effect 
that we call dependent arising, paticca samupada. And so you can see from this diagram, there are 24 stages, 12 descending stages and 12 ascending stages. And of course, enlightenment, nibbana, unbinding is the final result. But that means attaining nibbana is the final result. Nibbana itself is neither a cause nor an effect. Why is that? Here's some more quotes. Anuttara brahmachariya pariyosana. Nibbana is the supreme consummation of the holy life. So it is the holy life, actually. Huh? The word brahmacharya is often misinterpreted to mean celibacy, but celibacy is only a symptom of the holy life. The disinterest in conditioned consciousness in general huh? <laughs> is the actual symptom of the holy life. That one doesn't care really about the world or the individual self, but only as they are useful in the pursuit of enlightenment. This is the real meaning of brahmacharya. So when the Buddha talks about nibbana, He's not speaking of the result of sadhana because nibbana is completely independent. It's not a cause or a result of anything. It has no support. Huh? This is another nice quote. There is that sphere, monks, where there is no earth, no water, no fire, no air, no sphere of infinite space, no sphere of infinite consciousness, no sphere of nothingness, no sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, no this world, no world beyond, neither moon nor sun. There, monks, I say, there is surely no coming, no going, no persisting, no passing away, no rebirth. It is quite without support, unmoving, without an object. Just this is the end of suffering. So here we have a wonderful description of Nibbana by the Buddha. And of course, we have talked about these points so many times in all these talks that the Absolute, or Brahman, or Nibbana, whatever you want to call it, God, or, you know, heaven, or <laughs> self-realization, enlightenment, samadhi, turiya. I mean, there's as many names as there are teachings. But this thing, this state, this place, uh, of course, all those are incorrect. <laughs> It's not a thing, it's not a state, it's not a place either. But we use these metaphors so that we have a way of talking about it at all. Because actually it's inexplicable. Our language is developed to describe the world and to talk about practical things, doing, being, thinking, and so on in the world. But Nibbana is not in the world. It's not of the world. It's not a thing, it's not a place, it's not a state, it's not a condition. And yet, it is something that can be attained by the cultivation of sadhana. And that's what all of our videos, all of our series <laughs> are all about. So, this is the purpose of this series and every series on our channel is to invite you to do the sadhana, 
to attain this wonderful state or condition or to go to this place, uh, to use a metaphor. Nibbana, the secret treasure of all the Buddhas, which is truly the complete and total end of all suffering. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum.